EMC, and we are at the Hub Bicycle Company this afternoon. We are getting some questions answered from an expert, and our expert is here. His name is Alex, and, and Alex is going to answer some questions that, that students came up with about bicycle frames. So our first question, Alex, is um, what are some properties that we should look for in a bicycle frame, and why are those properties important? So um, what racers want primarily is speed, and out of a frame material, what they're looking for is uh, stiffness first. That's so if they're um, sprinting or cornering hard, the two wheels will stay pointed where they mean them to be. The bike won't wander around. Um, stiffness is first. Second is lightweight. Um, lightweight is important in any bike because um, it's easier to get up to speed and with um, a racing bike you are uh, doing a lot of acceleration and deceleration as you go in and out of turns so bringing it back up to full speed every single time um, you get takes more energy if it's a heavier bike so lightweight okay. is important there okay um, so first consideration is stiffness second is lightweight and third is comfort. Remember these are racing bikes and they aren't necessarily trying to finish comfortably, they're just trying to finish. So yeah. um, that comfort factor, even though it's important for a lot of other riders, is, uh, is not the primary thing for racers. So that balance between stiffness and comforts I mean, kind of a hard balance because on one end you have um, a material that holds its its form and its shape, and on the other you have one that kind of absorbs shock a little bit, right? Exactly. Those two things in a lot of materials are exactly counter to each other. Yeah. So um, it is hard, and that's kind of the holy grail. But racing bikes is one that is stiff enough to be a racing bike, but shock absorbent in the right dimensions shock absorbent enough to be comfortable. Okay. All right. All right, Alex, next question we're looking for what are some properties of materials that we should have in a wheel or and also what are some things about that wheel shape that are important? Well, the, as far as the materials go for a wheel, they're pretty much the same as the frame. Racers want it to be light. Wheel is very important to be light because it's rotating mass and it is doing even more accelerating and decelerating um, than um, like a frame would be. So if the wheel has more mass, that means that the racer has to move more and spend more energy to move that wheel. Exactly. And then also when they're decelerating, the brakes are working harder and um, means they have to put on their brakes earlier if the wheels are heavier and they want to go fast into the turn, brake late, and then be able to accelerate out of that turn um, as fast as they can. So right. light wheels are very important. Um, and the materials... Um, uh, stiffest is best for a wheel, um, stiff and light, the okay. requirements are similar to a frame. Um, they focus more on the shape on wheels, like if you look at this one, this is uh, one of the new kinds of carbon wheels, which is very deep here, so it has a pointy edge and is a lot more aerodynamic than a traditional flat-topped wheel. And um, with these, though what they're after is aerodynamics, and they want to be able to make an aerodynamic wheel without it being very heavy. So in this case, if they made this sort of wheel out of steel, it would be aerodynamic, but it would be terribly heavy, and it would be rejected by the racers. So in this case, you have to find a combination of um, stiffness, lightweight, uh, and it be um, a material that's good for making an aerodynamic shape out of.
All right, Alex, next question. We're going to move to tires. So um, does the amount of air in tires really matter, and how does that affect the racer? Racing. Uh, it, it does matter quite a bit. The more pressure you have in a tire, the faster it'll roll on a smooth surface. So if you were riding on a, um, a track made out of boards, which uh, there is that kind of racing, mm -hmm. those people will try to put as much air pressure as they can because they don't particularly need the tire to conform to the road surface. There's no bumps to conform to, so they mm -hmm. can run very high pressure and get a very fast ride that way. But riding on um, city streets and racing on city streets, the way most racing mm -hmm. is, you have to have um, low enough pressure that the tire can conform to the road. Um, if you think about if you made a tire out of um, iron, like an iron hoop, which is the way bike tire, bike wheels started. Um, you can't go very fast because the bike uh, s spends as much energy bouncing over things as it does going forward. So there's a cutoff point where you have enough pressure that it rolls fast, but not enough, not so much pressure that it rides rough, and that's what they're after. Mm -hmm. um, another aspect of tire pressure is uh, traction. If you if you have lower tire pressure you have a bigger contact patch that's what we call the amount of rubber that's actually on the road sure um, if you increase the tire pressure you're decreasing that contact patch and there's more of a chance that you'll slide out if you're cornering hard yeah so yeah so you talk I mean so accidents do happen in these races how fast are these racers going uh, they'll generally finish with an average speed of um, oh, 25 to 30, I guess. Um, okay. Their highest speeds in the sprints will get close to 40 miles an hour.